What is going on then guys, welcome to a new video. So it's been a while then since I've done these kind of one-to-one -one videos where instead of going into the computer and actually showing you some sort of tutorial or Facebook technique, whatever it is, um, where I actually just sit here and talk to you guys then on a one-to-one -one basis. So you've seen the title of the video and that's what we're gonna be discussing purely because, especially recently in fact, it's in the free Facebook group that I run, um, there's been quite a few posts about people complaining that dropshipping is a scam, it doesn't work or that it's not worth it the amount of time or money you have to put in just isn't doesn't make it worth it essentially so i thought that's what i wanted to discuss in this video and what i've tried to do then is take as big a step back as possible and look at dropshipping kind of from like an unbiased point of view obviously i've been involved in dropshipping for over two years now so i think it's a great business model but I'm going to have a different opinion to somebody who's just starting out or somebody who's just looking at what business model to go for for this year or perhaps someone just in those beginner stages building their store doing their product research who see posts like this then from people saying they've spent x amount and it doesn't work and to just to, to basically give up so i've taken a step back then i'm looking at drop shipping as a whole and i'm going to go through the points then that kind of kind of like the things that people the reasons why people say it doesn't work and just kind of try and offer up some sort of solutions into why they do work or things you can do to get around them or potentially do them correctly so they don't stop you from being successful then. So before we actually get into the video, um, I've got some notes to go through in fact, um, just so I don't go off topic and end up making this video like half an hour long. It probably will be anyway. Um, what I want to address here is that the fact that the question that we're going to be talking about is whether dropshipping is worth it, not whether does does dropshipping actually work because they're two completely different questions. And for the people coming to this video then who want the answer to does dropshipping work, then the answer is yes, 100% yes. And the fact that I can say that is because it works for me, it works for other people. So if that's the question you're looking for or the answer to the question you're looking for, then it's 100% yes. And I can guarantee that because I know that it works for me, like I said, and other people. Whereas the question is dropshipping worth it is a completely different question. And I can't give you a definitive answer to that question purely because everybody has different circumstances everybody's in a different situation so for example then somebody might only have say one hour a night to devote to drop shipping in which case then drop shipping probably isn't going to be worth it to them because especially when you first get started you're going to need to put in more than one hour a day so for that person there's no point spending that hour every night because they're just not going to get anywhere so for them then drop shipping isn't worth it so even though drop shipping might come across as not a very good business model in some aspects then the way you've got to look at it is compare it to other business models so the reason i like drop shipping so much then is because it's so cheap to get started it's so fast to get started and it's so quickly scalable so if drop shipping isn't worth it to you then the way you've got to look at it is what other business models are then what other business models can you get started for less than 200 dollars you can be selling pretty much in the same day. Like it takes a few hours just to get your store set up, stick some products on it and get some ads running. Um, and what other business models can you go from nor to making over a thousand dollars a day in the space of one day? If you've got enough ad budget to devote to it, then you can easily do that. Like there's not a lot of other business models you can do that in. So if you don't do drop shipping, then what else are you gonna do if that makes sense? So try to look at drop shipping in comparison to all the other similar business models before you make your mind up in saying that drop shipping just isn't worth it just one quick thing then that i forgot to say at the beginning if you want to see more videos like this then where i talk to you guys on a one-to-one -one basis um just real talk no bs then make sure you leave a comment down below and i can do more videos like this i'd started doing them a while ago and they got pretty good feedback actually but for whatever reason i stopped doing them um so if you want more videos more topics like this make sure i leave a comment down below um, and it's something i can do i quite enjoy doing videos like this actually because the tutorials and everything are great, but they're only, they only help you guys out on a surface level where in videos like this, I can talk to you on a deeper level and try and help you understand drop shipping and why certain things work or why certain things don't work just on a deeper level. So you grasp a better understanding and ultimately that's going to help you be more successful in the long run because unless you understand it you have to understand it not on a surface level you have to understand it on a deeper level than that because it's one thing just to follow tutorials but then if they don't work then where do you go from there like there's you just you, you become stuck because you don't know what to do but if you understand facebook ads on a deeper level shopify on a deeper level marketing on a deeper level why certain products work and don't work then when you get to that point where a certain strategy or whatever it is doesn't work then the idea of what where to go next will just come straight into your head and you'll know what to do so um, yeah, just make sure you let me know then if you want to see more videos like this one. So point number one then is, you probably won't be able to read that, 
is adaptation. So what I mean by that then is that in any business model you will choose to go into, unless you adapt to the current market climate, then you're not going to be successful or you're going to get left behind. So in fact, there's quite a good saying that um, has always stuck in my mind when I heard it. can't remember who told me it or where I heard it from, but it goes that if you're not moving forwards, then you're moving backwards. And what that means then is that everybody in your market or in your industry is going to be striving to improve and move forwards so unless you're moving forwards as well then essentially you're moving backwards because you're you're like leaving yourself behind basically just falling further and further behind so unless you so even if you do move forward then you're only going to be staying at that same place if that makes sense because everybody else is moving forward as well so you've got to move forward even quicker than everyone else um, the point i'm trying to make then is basically competition and unless you adapt to your competition and keep outdoing them then you're going to get left behind and ultimately not going to be successful so the point i'm trying to make or what this is relative relative to is facebook ads and instagram influencers when i got started over two years ago they were so much cheaper it's crazy how much um, they've just increased in price. You only have to go back and look at some of my earlier videos and you can see that like achieving a cost per purchase of like three, four pounds just wasn't a big deal back then. That was like pretty much average. If you have a look at my YouTube channel for the With Proof series, I document loads of those um, types of ad sets and results. Whereas nowadays, like if I can get if I can get under ten pound per purchase just on on like the initial ad set going out to cold traffic, then I'm more than happy with that. Whenever I choose to add a product to my store, then I ha I always build in at least a ten pound cost per purchase, even more if I can. So one way then to kind of combat this and get over it is that when looking at your Facebook ads, especially instead of looking at and think or instead of thinking, will somebody buy this product or will somebody click on this ad, you've got to think of it as a social product like is this product sociable is it the kind of thing people will share on social media so when you create your ad whether it's a video static image whatever it is be thinking along the lines of would somebody share this ad so when you're creating it you've got to think about whether this ad has the potential to become viral because that is that's pro bar the actual targeting options you have with facebook then the number two advantage is like the shareability of things and how quickly things can just go viral if you create that one really good ad. And if you get one ad to go viral, then that's all you'll need. That will literally change your life. You will see so many sales from that one ad that you'll probably make two, three, four, if not like five or six months wages in in like the space of a couple of weeks. So when creating your ads, try and think of it in that way. Think about fun and unique ads that are going to attract attention, make people laugh or make them feel some sort of emotion um, and ultimately make people want to share them um, or tag their friends in at least because the more you can get people to do that, the more people you're going to reach it's going to be a lot cheaper. You're going to get organic reach because obviously you don't. every time somebody shares your ad, the average Facebook user has... I think it's somewhere between 200 and 300 friends. So if they share your Facebook ad, that's potentially 250 people uh, roughly that are going to see your ad for free that you don't have to pay for. So imagine if you can get a thousand people to do that, that organic reach is going to be absolutely huge. So you're going to get more reach basically uh, for less money. So the more you can do that, the better chances you have of being successful. Moving on to point number two then, which is saturation. Again, another massive thing, probably probably one of the number one reasons actually why people think drop shipping doesn't work. Um, and the way you've got to think about this then is, yes, there's a lot of people doing it. There's a certainly a lot more people doing it now than there were two years ago. But think about this realistically. Like, How many of those people that are doing it now are going to succeed? Like, It's probably, now this is purely a guess, but I bet it's less than 10%. It's probably less than 5%. So the way you've got to think about it is if you be conservative about the way you're doing it and make sure you spend your money wisely and spend it slowly, then if you're still going in six months' time, then all those people that are currently doing it now probably won't be in business. Now you might argue the fact that within six months time there'll be a whole load more people coming into the coming into your space and doing it as well or start doing it within that six month period but you've got six months advantage over them that's six months of knowledge and skills that you've gained that's six months of engagement it's six months of data so the longer you stay in business, the bigger advantage you'll have over everybody that comes into your space because you'll be more intelligent and you'll be more geared up and knowledgeable about the way things work. So when you first get started, then start slowly. Make sure you spend your budget conservatively. If something isn't working on Facebook, don't just throw more money into it. That's not the way it works. And your ultimate goal then has to be just to stay in business for as long as possible. Even if you're just breaking even, then in six months time, things will be 
your knowledge of Facebook ads, how it works <clears throat> and what a good ad and bad ad looks like is going to be so much better. Like when you first start and you run two ads, then if you get, if you spend say 10 pound on each ad and they get a hundred comments, then at the beginning, you're not going to have a clue whether that's good or bad. But in six months time, you spend 10 pound and you get a hundred comments again, you'll know straight away within that first day, whether that's a good ad or not. So you'll be able to spend your money even more efficiently in six months time, if that makes sense. Your skills and understanding of Facebook ads will just be so much better and you'll have that advantage over everyone who has been in business for less time than you. Another way you've got to think about it then is that if you do the same as everybody else, then how can you expect any other different results? Like if somebody's running 10 miles an hour and they get and they run 10 miles in one hour, if you're running at the exact same pace as them, how can you expect to get even further in a space of an hour? I know it's a bit of a weird um, example, but it's so true because you have to do things differently if you expect to get different results and even more crucially, better results. So make sure you differentiate yourself from, from everybody else. If everybody else is using static images that they've found on AliExpress to create a slideshow of their product, yes, it might be working for them, might be going well, but going back to that earlier point in the video that you need to be moving forward but at a faster pace than everybody else to be truly moving forward like if you just create that same slideshow and same ads yeah you might get pretty decent results but you're not gonna you're not gonna outpace them and do better than them so go that extra mile buy products from aliexpress wait two weeks for it to arrive and even if you just film like you can film pretty decent videos on your iphone now and just some sort of video about it or you can find people on fiverr who will do it for about 50 quid where you just send them the product they'll create a pretty cool video and then just send it back to you um go that extra mile think about it like a proper business structure has such a bad reputation of being like this really easy and amateurish business that anybody can set up and start making money within a few weeks but that's just not the case take it seriously like when you create a business, that business is going to be a representation of you. You want to be proud of it. So make sure the images are awesome. Make sure the products are really good from really good suppliers because you just the prouder and just like more motivated you will be about it, then the better job you'll do. I'm kind of going off topic here, but um, the points are still relevant and it's still important. Just be proud about what you do and be proud and feel good about the fact that you're spending more money and more time making yourself or your business, your brand, your products better than everyone else. And trust me, it will pay off in the long run. Moving on to the final point of the video then, guys. There's a few other points I wanted to go through, but I'm not going to put them in this video. I'm getting conscious of the length of time. I don't want to bore you guys. So if you want part two of this one, then make sure you leave a comment down below um, and I'll release it. I think so. This one's going to be coming out at about 6 p.m. Um, what I'll do then is record the video and if you want part two, I'll just release it later on um, in the day and the night. So part two then quickly is competition. So kind of integrates with the whole saturation thing. Um, competition is a good thing and you can use it to your advantage and use it to make yourself better. So if you think about it, if there was zero competition, then how would you know if a product was good or not? You wouldn't know unless you spent hundreds of pounds on testing it on Facebook, but you can use competition then to your advantage by seeing what products they're selling and seeing what's working, seeing what kind of ads they're running and seeing what's working. And the way you do this then is, you've, I've done plenty of tutorials, but just quickly, you can go on their Facebook page, see what ads, see what posts they're putting out, and look at the engagement, look at the comments. How are people saying that they like this product? How are people tagging people? How many shares has that post got? And you can use that sort of information to your advantage to, to basically, once you know what they're doing, you can take what they're doing and then do it in a better way. And then you're gonna be moving forward at a faster pace than what they are doing. So competition is a good thing. Don't see saturation as, and competition as a bad thing. Use it as a way to move forward even faster than what they're doing. If you know, exactly what somebody else is doing, then it's easier to move forward faster than they are. It's easier to outdo them because you know exactly what they're doing. So just take what they're doing and improve it in somehow, whether it's the ad, the product, whatever it is. So that's kind of the final point I want to make in this video. Like I said, if you want to see point two, uh, there's a couple of other points I could go through. Um, make sure you leave a comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, if you're still watching, thank you very much. I really do appreciate the people who watch the videos all the way through because it does make a difference um, to how quickly this channel grows. So that being said, if you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like. Um, and if I don't see you later on in the day, about nine o'clock for part two, then I'll definitely see you tomorrow. Um, there will be a post going out as well on the community um, tab of this YouTube channel asking for video ideas for the weekend. So make sure you can leave them in the comment section as below or just look out for that post, DM me. Either way, let me know what sort of content you wanna see um, this weekend come in. So that being said, again, thank you for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next one.